I've just disembarked a cruise on one of the most exciting cruise ships in the entire world, where I braved a 10-storey drop slide and raced other passengers around a three-storey racetrack that's on the top deck. The cruise was on board the newest Norwegian cruise ship, Norwegian Prima, and even though I've been cruising with Norwegian since I was a child, this ship took me by surprise in every way possible. Our cruise took us to Bermuda, and in between lots and lots of live music and entertainment and food, I saw and did things on this cruise that most people would not believe were possible on cruise ships. The cruise was anything but ordinary, and like every cruise, it wasn't all plain sailing. Prima has 19 bars and 15 different restaurants, she's 20 decks high, and as long as has 13 tennis courts or 75 full-size cars. She's a relatively big cruise ship. I knew that Prima had far more choice than I'm used to at sea, so I did wonder if I might find it a little bit overwhelming. I hope that I wouldn't feel too busy sharing this cruise ship with over 3,000 other people, and I hope that I would come off this cruise feeling as though it was worth the price tag. I'd been told that Prima was a more luxurious and premium kind of cruise, but I didn't know if that would suit me and suit the way that I cruise. When I saw a sailing on Norwegian Prima sailing to Bermuda, I knew that this was my chance to give it a go. Sailing out of New York City is absolutely fantastic, and Bermuda, it's just beautiful. When we embarked the ship, all we had to do was drop off our suitcases, head through security, and then show our paperwork at the check-in desk. I do have a loyalty status with Norwegian from all of my years with cruising with them, so I was given an early embarkation time of 11.30, which was fantastic. I love getting on board a cruise ship in time for lunch. That's always my goal. I could see the ship out of the windows of the terminal, and I was so excited to get on board. Board. Standing on the gangway, I noticed these terrifying looking slides on the side of the ship. I hoped that I would get up the courage during the cruise to give them a go, but I certainly was not going to make any promises about that. Walking into the ship, we walked straight into the middle of this atrium and we were directed upstairs to check in for our safety drill, which is a legal requirement on all cruises. We had already watched the safety video on our phones at home and it was also on the cabin TV, so that made it all very easy. The atrium felt light and bright and open, and I just really loved this design, particularly the ceiling and these areas that I think look like giant ice cubes. It felt like being in some sort of high-tech modern spaceship, and this chair I thought was really cool too. The colours and the art felt very modern and completely different from my last Norwegian cruise on the older cruise ship, Norwegian Sun. Both were amazing and I love my time on the Sun, but you can instantly see the difference that the last 20 years of cruise ship designers had. All of the lobbies and the corridors had the same sort of style. Design is subjective of course, but I thought that the sparkly parts on the ceiling were so cool, and I just love the colours and the patterns and the carpets around the ship. I didn't realise at this point just what a big part tech would play in this cruise, but more about that later. The sparkly theme continued into the lift as we headed up to the top deck to grab a drink. It felt so good to be wearing a dress because to me it felt like a very warm summer's day. To the locals I don't think they thought that it was warm but to me it definitely was. We got a drink from the pool bar and we sat by the pool with New York City as a backdrop. I'm from England so I travelled a long way to get here and it was such a relief to finally be on board. It felt like being in a movie to be honest to have all of this scenery around us. It was from here that I could see the go-kart track on top of the ship and I realised just how huge this track was. It looked epic and I think that is the best word to describe it. Norwegian do have a ship called Norwegian Epic, which I have cruised on in the past, but I think this one's even more epic than epic. I'd seen pictures of this racetrack before, but nothing could have prepared me for the scale of it. At this point, the ship wasn't busy because we'd just embarked, but I did wonder if the go-karts meant that there wouldn't be enough outdoor space. I'd heard that there was a lot more outdoor space on the lower decks, but it wouldn't be until later in the cruise, when everybody was on board, that I would see how this worked in reality. By now, we were getting pretty hungry, so we decided to head to lunch in one of the included main dining rooms on board. This one is called Hudson's. I can't confirm that this was named after our cat and mascot, Captain Hudson, Hudson, but personally, I like to believe that it was. Hudson's is a huge main dining room with glass windows all the way around. I love cruise ships that focus on the view and letting in light, and Prima definitely does have all of these big windows as a theme throughout the ship. The dining room felt spacious and modern, I love these light fittings, and the space really did flow well. It flowed so well that at one point I went to the toilet, and when I came back, I tried to wander around to find my friends, but I just kept walking, I couldn't see them, and I thought to myself, at some point, I'm gonna come back out the other side of this restaurant, so I had to turn back and go the other way, and my friends were waving at me luckily, because I don't have a great sense of direction. By now our cabins were ready, so we decided to head there to have a look around and to prepare for our sail out of New York City. The sailaway is constantly ranked one of the top sailaways in the world, so I did not want to miss it. 
When we walked into our cabin, I honestly had to check the deck plans to check that I'd been assigned a standard balcony cabin because this one just felt huge to me. I've stayed in smaller mini suite cabins in the past and I just loved the design of this one. At this point, I hadn't noticed the little things like the USB C's and A's in the lamps and it wouldn't be until later that I would notice that all the drawers were soft clothes and that there was tons of storage. What I noticed pretty quickly though was how huge the bathroom was. The shower area was massive and the door opened in the most amazing way. I hope all cruise ships will copy this design because it just makes so much sense and it made me happy every single day. There was also a drawer here in the bathroom which was perfect for putting away all of those things that you use daily and don't want just cluttering up the space. Heading out onto the balcony I realised that we had already started to sail away from New York City. I always get asked how much movement you can feel on a cruise ship and I think the fact that I didn't even notice that we were sailing says quite a lot. That actually wasn't the only time that this happened during the cruise. At one point we were sailing away from Bermuda and I was actually sat on the balcony and I didn't even notice that we were moving. Really I should have noticed that things were getting further away but it just didn't cross my mind. We headed up to the top deck as we sailed away and I did expect it to be pretty crowded because the main pool deck area wasn't very big but this really wasn't the case. There were two higher decks that I hadn't noticed earlier and there were loads of sun loungers and seats up there. To me it just felt as though the pool decks were kind of broken up over different decks instead of everything being here sort of around the pool. At this point I still hadn't discovered the outside areas that were down low on the ship. I assumed that a lot of people watch the sail away from here but at this point I didn't even know that it existed. Prima does have a high percentage of cabins with balconies too so I think a lot of people chose to stay here to watch the sail away and with these kinds of comfortable chairs I think that makes sense. That is one of the big benefits of newer cruise ships. If you were to look back kind of 20 years or so they had far fewer balconies than they do now. Even if you look within the Norwegian Cruise Line fleet, Norwegian Spirit which I took my first cruise on has more inside cabins and ocean view cabins than balconies but Prima has far more balcony cabins than any other grade. From the top deck here we had the greatest view of the sail out of New York City. It was far windier than I expected so I spent a lot of the time holding down my dress until I realised that I could just wrap a towel around me. This worked brilliantly and I wasn't the only person who did it so I would highly recommend this approach. This was made so much easier by the fact that the pool towels were already on the sun loungers. A lot of cruise lines don't do that and that was a really nice touch. We sailed away from Manhattan past the Statue of Liberty and then under the bridge that connects Staten Island to Brooklyn. We only had a few meters of clearance between us and the bridge and even though you do know that the crew have a good idea of how high the water is and how high the ship is you do almost hold your breath waiting for the bridge to go over the top. It feels as though the bridge comes at you so slowly and then so fast and then it's gone. Once we'd sailed under the bridge we headed inside to find somewhere less windy. The closest place was the observation lounge and we would visit this multiple times a day every single day during this cruise. Just like the main dining room Hudson's the observation lounge has huge windows on all of the sides and it always felt very relaxed and very calm. It was a very chilled out venue which I like. You'd often find people here in the afternoon enjoying the view with a book and we would sometimes come here for breakfast as they had a little buffet where you could grab a banana or a pastry. It was perfect for me. I'm not big into my breakfast but being able to grab something and just eat it here, very very nice. Our first dinner on board was in Onda by Scarpetta. This is a speciality restaurant that costs a little bit extra and you can either pay a la carte or you can buy a dining package like I did. Onda serves a variety of pastas, pizzas, seafood dishes, all of which were great and they were beautifully presented too. I'm personally not a fan of octopus but for all of you octopus lovers out there I was told that this was very good octopus. I loved how intimate this restaurant felt too. There were over 3,000 people on this cruise. She was at full capacity and we were sailing during the school holidays, but you would never know that when you're in a restaurant like this. I did wonder if the full capacity would cause us any problems and if I would feel as though there were too many people on this ship, but only time will tell. We headed to the Metropolitan Bar next and I ordered what is called a sustainable cocktail. These are made with leftovers from the ship so this one is actually made with leftover croissants if you can believe it. In theory they can make these cocktails from anything so maybe, maybe one day in the future we'll see a leftover cookie cocktail. It's not likely if I'm on board but maybe a cruise out there somewhere has leftover cookies. I had heard that on this cruise I needed to make sure that I saw a show in Sid Norman's Poor House and I also knew that the theatre turned into a nightclub which I had to see. At this point though I was feeling pretty jet lagged so I wasn't planning on partying the night away. We did stay to see a couple of songs by the amazing Francis but we decided to save exploring the ship for the next day. I still hadn't seen any of the outdoor lower spaces, I hadn't seen most of the entertainment venues, I hadn't seen the majority of the ship to be honest. I am convinced that you could spend seven days on the ship and still not find everything if you weren't looking. I slept so well in this big comfy bed and when I woke up I decided to head out to explore the outdoor spaces on deck 7. 
27. What I found would become one of my favourite included food venues on board. The weather was a little rocky on our crossover to Bermuda, but we were luckier on the way coming back. They did have to close the outdoor pools for obvious reasons, but it wasn't exactly swimming weather anyway, so that wasn't a big problem. We were heading to Bermuda, but we weren't actually sailing through the Bermuda Triangle. Cruises do go through there all the time though, and they don't get lost. It's totally fine to sail through the Bermuda Triangle. It was on deck seven that we found this amazing promenade deck. It's pretty common for modern cruise ships to not include a promenade deck at all, but Norwegian have not just kept the promenade deck, but they've pushed it further than any other cruise line. By the way, if you are watching this and you would like to book a cruise on Prima or any other cruise ship, please get in touch through my website. It never costs more than booking direct. It quite often costs less than booking direct. And then you have our help and our advice forever. At the infinity beach area, there's infinity pools on both sides that are really quite big. It's always funny to see people in these pools when you're on land. Their legs just look so funny floating there and I think they forget that people can see them. Carrying on along the promenade deck, I came across the Indulge Outdoor Lounge and the Sole Bar. The bar here actually has a partnership with the celebrity chef Kathy Casey and they serve lots of very interesting cocktails here. Heading into Indulge was like going through a curtain into Narnia or something equally as magical. It was closed when we visited for the first time which was fantastic because it means that I got to get excited about it and got to see it with nobody there. Indulge Food Hall is like a market hall and every time you go around a corner you don't really know what's going to be there. You'll find that each area is decorated according to a different theme that matches the food and these seats are my personal favourites. I think we sat in most sections during this cruise though because I came back here quite often. When I was cruising with Norwegian as a teenager one of my favourite things was that if I ever had a spare 10 minutes I could just go for a walk walk around the ship and you would find something happening somewhere. That's exactly what we did now and we came across deal or no deal happening in the theatre. This was our first look at the theatre and I knew that it changed into a nightclub but looking at this I had no idea how they could transform this space. It felt huge though and it's actually spread over three decks. I've seen other cruise lines try the kind of theatre nightclub concept without much luck in the past so I hope that this would be better. I'd also heard that there was a big Broadway style musical on board and I love musicals and also the Price is Right game show which I was really excited to see. I was absolutely not prepared for the Price is Right live. My heart reached 125 which is what it normally is when jogging but I'll tell you more about why later. <laughs> Looking at the Norwegian Cruise Line app, I could see that my booking for the go-karts was coming up at 6.30. This was the group go-karting and all I wanted was not to be so slow that I was holding everybody else up. I had visions of me being like a mother duck with all of my little ducklings behind me and I did not want that to happen. Waking up in Bermuda and opening the curtains to this sea was just incredible. I honestly didn't really realise that the sea could be that colour. It was the most beautiful turquoise, it was see-through, and at this point I realised why one of the main things to do in Bermuda is to go snorkelling. The sea is perfect for it. We were spending three days in Bermuda, so we had a lot of time to explore. It was quite funny to see the signs that normally have an all-aboard time just say overnight. You could stay out overnight if you wanted to. You could stay out for the full three days if you wanted to and just come back to sail back to New York. I've never done that personally, but I think it's good that that is an option. Norwegian do ask though that you just let them know if you're going to be sleeping off the ship in case they need to, you know, sail back early because of a storm or something. They need a way to get in contact with you if you're not staying on the ship. We headed inside and decided that now would be a really good time to explore the inside spaces that we hadn't seen yet. On the lower level of the atrium, we found the Pemrose bar and it was here that I had my first cocktail that's available on tap. The red bubbles was my favourite, although they were all pretty fantastic. Norwegians sell a variety of drinks packages and normally I'm a soda package girl, but on this cruise I had the premium plus package, which meant that I could have almost anything. So I made sure to try as many different things as I could. You can just pay as you go if you'd prefer, but I did get the impression that most people on the ship did have a drinks package of some sort. They would have live music in this bar in the evening, which was very popular. I think personally it would have been better if they kind of moved the music out into the atrium so that the people on the higher levels could hear it a bit better but maybe that's something that they'll do on a future ship. I love the design of this bar and it was the perfect place for a pre-dinner tipple. The word tipple has got to be your Britishism of the week. A tipple is normally an alcoholic drink, it's kind of your favourite drink and the one that you would go to in a social situation. So your tipple of choice may be a gin and tonic, it may be a glass of wine. On a cruise like this your cruise card is your key to everything. It's how you get into your room, it's how you pay for things and it's how they know who is on and who is off the ship. We head off into Bermuda after lunch and Bermuda is actually made up of seven small islands. The longest island is only two miles wide so if you're in Bermuda you're never further than one mile from the sea. 
To step off here was fantastic. It was around 25 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 79 Fahrenheit. It was absolutely glorious and we were docked next to a smaller Norwegian ship called Norwegian Pearl. I haven't been on Norwegian Pearl, but I have been on her sister Norwegian Jewel. We did not have the same sunshine though, because we were in the Baltics, not Bermuda. We decided to head to the beach and to play a game of mini golf. I know it sounds a bit odd to get off of a ship that has mini golf on it to go and play mini golf, but it was recommended to me by a friend and it was lots of fun. It was within walking distance of the ship and the constant fear that I may hit the ball into the ocean just made it more exciting. I'm from the UK and Bermuda is a British overseas territory, so some things did feel familiar and some things felt totally different. You would never see the sea this colour in the UK, never ever. Back to the ship and we got to properly enjoy the promenade deck by having a meal in Los Lobos. It's a speciality restaurant that serves Mexican food and we ate here as the sun set over Bermuda. I will never forget this meal and for me this is really what cruising is all about. If I could just share five minutes with somebody who's never been on a cruise, I think this would be a good five minutes to pick. We had tableside guacamole and a whole tower of churros, which are fantastic. After dinner it was time for us to head to our first theatre show on board. I love the theatre. On board Prima, you do have to book your spaces to go and see the theatre shows, and I would recommend just doing that as soon as you get on board so that you have them. You can always cancel them or change them if you want to later. Even if you don't have a booking, you still can go and see a show because they release all of the seats of the people who booked and didn't show up about five or ten minutes before the show. The show was showing up as sold out, so I expected the theatre to be really busy, but I saw multiple empty seats, and the two seats next to me were empty too, so even if you don't have a booking, just go if you want to see the show. We sat in the middle level which gave us an amazing view of the stage, the lower seating and the upper seating. I think I would describe the lower seats kind of like stadium seats. I thought that they would be uncomfortable as they have to fold away but that was not the case at all. The musical that we watched was called Summer, the Donna Summer musical, and I have to admit before watching it, I wasn't really that familiar with Donna Summer's story. I had heard a lot of the songs, but for me the show was not only entertaining, but it was also educational. The quality of the show was just incredible. There was not a single foot out of line at a single point during the show. Every note was hit perfectly, and it was just like watching a show on Broadway or in the West End. The show was almost 90 minutes long and they had lots of clever set design pieces and colourful costumes that kept me entertained all the way through. My attention span is pretty short normally I think, but I was constantly entertained. Later in the cruise we watched The Price is Right live and this was quite an experience for me. We do have our own version of The Price is Right game show here in the UK, but I've got to be honest, I don't think that I've ever watched it and I would not have dared say that in this theatre because everybody in this theatre seemed to be die-hard Price is Right fans. I don't think I've ever seen an audience so excited for anything. I couldn't film the actual show, but this is pre-show, and this is how happy the audience are. It hadn't even started yet. When you go and see this show, it is assumed that you do want to be part of the show, you do want to get up, you do go on the stage, and you do want to be part of it. I think that's quite a big cultural difference between us Brits and the Americans who made up the majority of the passengers on this cruise. In the UK, it's very much assumed that you don't want to take part and you don't want to do something unless you have specifically opted into it and agreed. It seems as though in the US it is assumed that you want to do this, and that was just very different for me. In true British style, I was sat there and I was hoping that they wouldn't pick me, not just because I didn't want to go on the stage, but because I didn't want to take a go from somebody who really, really wanted to. Everyone else really wanted to. All the other guests had these crazy dances to walk down the aisles, people were whooping and cheering, there were custom t-shirts. I couldn't say that I had never seen the show. Watching the show was so much fun and the energy in the room was just fantastic. I will never ever look at this show the same way again. One of the most popular things to do on Norwegian Prima is to go to a show in Sid Norman's Poor House. Sid Norman's itself is beautifully decorated, it feels very very trendy, but it is a small room for the number of people that want to go and see the show, so make sure you get there early. I did wonder why everybody was so keen to queue up to go and see live music, because there was live music all over the ship. When I did do it though and I saw the show, it made perfect sense. We watched Rumours, which tells the story of Fleetwood Mac through their album Rumours. It was more like a story told through a live music performance than just live music, and because the room was so small it very much felt like being in some kind of trendy gig or some underground bar, something like that. All the rock memorabilia here is real too, so it's definitely worth taking some time to have a look even if you don't watch a performance in here. You don't have to book a ticket to go and see a show in Sid Norman's, and listening to the other people in the queue, some people had been multiple times because they just loved it so much. 
We decided to join the line around half an hour before doors opened and that seemed about perfect for standing. If you do want to sit, you're going to have to get there a little bit earlier, but it was absolutely worth the wait. The show itself starts half an hour after doors open, so in that time they'll get you drinks and you can kind of get settled. Our cruise was sailing at full capacity and we were sailing in the school holiday, so the ship definitely did feel lively, but we never had any problems finding somewhere to sit or something to eat. We never saw everybody together in one place and it just felt as though the people were quite nicely distributed across all of the venues. There weren't any particular points on the ship where everybody would get bunched up, like sometimes you find on some cruise ships. Prima felt as though it was split up into lots of different sections and I'm sure that some people never managed to find all of those. We would often find that it would be quite busy by the main pool but then going up one deck there would be almost nobody there. Maybe they knew, maybe they didn't, I don't know. There is one area on board that is always quiet and that is the adults only area called the Vibe Beach Club. This part does cost extra and there's only a certain number of passes per cruise so if you would like to come here make sure you book it straight away on that first day. The seats here are super comfortable, there's a bar and there's a couple of hot tubs on the side where I accidentally got in a video that my friend Tom was making. This might all sound very nice but I haven't even told you the best bit yet. They bring round cookies on a little tray. Four types of cookies. Amazing. Norwegian have a big area on board called the Galaxy Pavilion and here you can go on various different VR games. I did do it a little later in the cruise which was fantastic fun. Going on this roller coaster simulator with other people definitely made it feel more realistic because I could hear them making noises as the roller coaster dropped. Norwegian Prima has a lot of tech on board and not just in the VR pavilion but also in the cabins, also on the tablets that you order your food on and in the Wi-Fi that worked really well during this cruise. I did a live stream on my YouTube channel during this cruise and the stream never once went down or froze which is just incredible. I usually have to turn off the Wi-Fi and use 4 or 5G to stream but the Wi-Fi was great. Norwegian do have an app too which worked pretty well during our cruise. It would update instantly with purchases like the VR games or if we bought something in the gift shop. I always recommend that everybody keeps an eye on their onboard spend when they're on the cruise so that they don't get any nasty surprises on that last day. The app also had the daily schedule in it, deck plans and information about other venues like the speciality restaurants. Around the ship there were also these big screens with the same kind of information on them and if you were ever lost and you didn't know how to get back to your cabin for example, you could ask these screens and they would show you the best way to get there. I personally could do with a little robot that kind of pops out the bottom of the screen and then physically takes me to my room, but maybe that's something that will come in the future. As the night went on and the cocktails flowed, we decided to go to the nightclub on board. Most cruise ships have some kind of club area on board but I've never seen a space like this. The room was full of people having a great time and even just walking into the lower level with these cool lights was really awesome. These lights do change like mood lighting. They had a DJ here and this big screen where they'd share the music videos or whatever else they wanted to share. After checking out the nightclub we decided to go back to our cabin and to find out why this cabin is different from any that I've ever had on a cruise ship before, check out this video next. I think it may be my favourite cabin ever.